and welcome to another assembly language coding on the Commodore 64 video. And it's been a while since the last one. Uh, been very busy with this, that, and the other, but we're back. And uh, without any further ado, let's uh, get this underway. So, a quick recap of the last three videos. We looked at um, customized character sets. Uh, we used the standard high res ones, or custom graphics characters, whatever you want to call them. High res, where they're um, eight by eight, and they're either the um, foreground color or the background color, um, the each pixel. Background color, uh, the foreground color can obviously change in color color memory depending on where on the screen it is. And that can be set. So it can be one of 16 colors in the foreground and whatever you set your background color to. Then we went to a multi color um, custom graphics characters where you, it's uh, four by eight on them, but as well as the foreground color and the background color. You can have two multicolors as well, which have to be the same um, across all the characters. So you can change the uh, foreground color only for each one. And then we did the um, enhanced high res, where you have, um, I think it's either eight, it's eight times less characters, so you have 64, but you can change the background color uh, on the characters as well. So um, we're going to now sort of put that to some practical use. So we're going to look at how we sort of make a very simple um, map on our screen, like for a platform game or, or whatever, um, using, uh, using a utility called CarPad, which I'll leave a link to in the uh, video description. It's pretty useful software. Uh, the only downside to it is, is it only runs on Windows unless you can use Wine or some other such thing in um, Linux or Mac. So, but for this video, I'm doing the video on Windows and uh, we'll be using CarPad. So without any further ado, let's fire it up and have a look. Uh, here, here we have CarPad. Okay. So as you can see, I've started a new project. I've got a completely empty character set here. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to use the um, or copy over the uh, standard Commodore 64 character set to this like we've done in previous videos because we're just going to make some basic graphics. Okay, so here's our character set here. So we've got one here. I deleted all the others. I like to insert them as we go, otherwise. We end up with a load of blank ones there, which we don't really want, and it uses up memory. Here's the editor. Here's the character editor, and this is our map. So uh, this map is uh, 40 by 25, which is the Commodore 64 native screen. Okay, uh, we can do bigger, or you know, either higher or longer or wider. Um, if we're going to do a map that scrolls, which we will be covering in a future video. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to do a straightforward uh, one screen map. Okay, here we have our sel color selectors. We've got a uh, background color. We've got a character color, which is our foreground color, and then our two multicolor. Okay, and then um, coloring, coloring method. It's, um, it's, at the moment, it's set to per map. Basically, that's your character color. But we'd like to have different character colors in each different character because you can do that with the color memory. So I'm going to change this to per character. Okay, so that's done there. And um, yes, here we go with our character set. We're going to be using multicolor. Obviously, we want it to look nice and pretty. Um, I'll probably look to do sort of a basic scenery something you know with the you know with some um with the ground some little platforms and maybe some sky and some grass or whatever and that but I'll, I'll um i'll skip through me doing the entire process because it'll probably take me a little while but i'll show you how it works and we'll get the basics going so let's say background color it's our sky so we want we want it like that okay um 
for our platform, we'll probably I'll probably do some sort of wall. So for this, uh, let's, let's, that's our blank one. So let's uh, actually know if we can do that. So let's have uh, because it's um, at the moment. Do you remember in the multicolor video that you could only choose the, the um, from from character eight to character fifteen? Or the second half, you got naught to seven and eight to sixteen for it to be um, used in multi in multi uh, color mode. As you can see there, it's in um, high res mode, so we don't want that. So we do that by clicking the color in this bottom section here. We can see the stripes. Okay, so so we would be yellow. There, that puts it. See, if it's four by eight now, so we can design, we can design the uh, we can design the character this way. Here are here are multi Multicolor ones. We want a yellow there and maybe a red there. So if we say that if we're doing a wall or something, let's put that to green. So we're doing a wall or something. We can uh, do that as our bricks. Choose that color. Put that in like that. Okay. Obviously, we don't want to edit that character, do we? Because <laughs> that's the, that's the blank one. But well, there you, you get the idea. So let's let's clear this off. Um, we just use the right click to actually blank it off. Okay, and what we're doing here, we go character. Um, we add one. How do we add it again? Insert blank. There we go. So this is the one we'll do. We'll do that. Oh, it's still a little bloke there. Let's uh, let's see. Flood fill that. Okay. So here's our wall. Here's our yellow. There we go. And then what we do is with that selected there, we can, we can just put it there. Could I select it? Brush size one. Sorry, that's selected. Brush size one. I mean, we just put it somewhere. And we can do another character. Set blank. Let's put it in the game. Put it to multicolor mode, and we just I'll just do a bit of a wall across the top there, and then choose that color. And do that, and then with this character, we can actually put it there next to there. So we've got a start of something. We can put it there. And one more. I'll show you a little trick. We've got to just flip this round, yeah. Okay, so what we do is we can copy it, and then paste uh, a pen, so that place it the last character. So we've got it there. And then we can use uh, these tools here to flip it left to right. So I can do that and then place it there. Place one there. Use that one, place it there. Do you know what I mean? So that's how you do it then you can keep on adding adding characters coloring them out how you want you can change this for each character okay so you may want green in that one and white in that one in another one or yellow somewhere else or you know there's also all sorts of possibilities so what i'm going to do i will um jump cut i will actually make something that looks a little bit better than what you see on the screen there and then i will um resume the video okay here we go here is uh here's my wonderful little map there's two platforms there we've got a background we've got we've got some grass there we've got some sand there then the sea then we've got the sky a couple of clouds and then the sunshine so if we look at my characters here we've got the blank one we've got 
one piece of ball there, another piece of ball there, and there's the um, bit in the middle. There's our grass. See, if you look at the character color, it's different for each one because we're on per character. That's the that's for the clouds. Well, there's no curves. Then I've got the curves here, and I made and I made these other ones by copying them and then flipping them horizontally and um, vertically. So we've got some sort of fluffy edges to our or rounded edges there, and I did the same with the sun. So we got the the yellow one there. That's yellow. That's the top round, top left round, top right round. Bottom left, bottom right, and then these these two here are the other sort of edges on that that stopped it looking too flat. See, and then we've got this is our C. So here we have it. Here we have our map. So how do we get this onto our Commodore sixty four? What we do is we once we've saved our project because you can save. Save this as it is as a project so you can go back, make some changes, edit it, and then re export it. But at the moment, we're happy with this. Well, I am. Don't know about you lot. <laughs> um, and then we go to file, ex import exports, text ASM, and I do all essentials one file. Okay, so that would give us the maps, the characters, and the color map. Okay. And I will show you uh, in Notepad what we get. Okay, here we have our uh, we have our uh, export. Let's just quickly go through what some of this is. Um, so we'll zoom in a bit here. This is our um, these are our color definitions. I mean, we don't really need those. We've set up constants for those. How many custom characters there are? There's eighteen. And the map width is bought in 25. Again, we won't really, really be using that much. Okay. So, and same as our data in sizes. Okay. It's not really going to be much use to us at the moment. So, it says insert sample program here, but we won't. So, here we go. These are our custom characters. Okay. Definitions. So, there was 18 of them, and there'll be 18 lots of eight. So, this is. Uh, our custom character if you, you know how to make those um manually we, we did that in the previous video and how to load them in but we'll be doing we'll be loading these in this is interesting this is our attributes um there's 18 characters so there's 18 um 18 bytes here okay so it's um one attribute per image, eight bits per attribute. Upper nibble is the material. I still haven't worked out what the material is. The important thing is the lower nibbles is the color. So, uh, you know, the um, foreground color for each character, okay, which we, we've made per character. So character, um, character one, uh, D is the color, hexadecimal D. Character Character two is A, character three is A, four is A, then you've got D again, nine. So the, the, these are what colors we need to load up onto the map. So this is a nice little lookup table so we can set the colors. And then lastly, we have got the map data here, which is what we want to put into screen memory. Now, there is a way to compress this and decompress it so it uses less memory, but we're going to just for the sake of this video, we're just going to do it the simple way. Right, so what we'll do is we'll look at what we uh, did for video eight, because that was multicolor, wasn't it? So if we go here and look at the start here. Okay, we import the constants. We we uh, expose the uh, custom, the um, Kernel character bank, copy it into our custom character area, which is 3000. And then we um, enable multi color mode and then set some colors. So, what I think we should do is just copy that into here. And we'll just delete the um, character copying parts because we don't need to do that. So we we don't need to expose the um, 
character set at all so that we can uh, get rid of this this is enabling multicolor mode so we'll have cyan because it was of the sky color that was a border and screen this one was doesn't matter what it is we can make that one red it's our text color it's gonna be different because we're gonna load it into color memory this one was uh red i believe and this one was yellow okay so we'll just zoom out of there and we'll pop a um pop an rts in there just to, at the bottom so in fact i don't think we need to set the text color at all so let's just fire that up and just make sure that that all works nicely. Oh, I'm at the yellow, yes, typo. Let's just um, run that, build it. There we go. So in multicolor mode, you can tell by the uh, way the text looks. See? And uh, yeah, our colors are set. So what is next? What we need to do now is um, copy our um, characters in, don't we? So our custom characters that we've just designed on Carpad. What we need to do, we need to, again, what we did in video 8, we need to point the uh, Vic chip at uh, 3,000 for the characters. So we'll do that now. Let's just pop in a little uh, comment here. Point car bank at... 2000. Uh, load the graphics point into the accumulator and it with four zero. Clear the carry. That's the number 12. Oops. Hate it when it does that. That's what happens when I'm. Uh, Well, do it and then store that back into the graphics pointer. Um, check video eight out if you want to see exactly why we do this. It's all explained there. Okay, so that points the characters at 3000. And obviously, if we save and run that now, we're going to get nothing there because our characters are not defined. So it's whatever's in there, which could be anything. So here's the fun part. Okay. Okay, well, we'll go down here and we will put our character in. Custom cars. And we want that at address 3000. So you can see that if you're uh, watching in low resolution. I'm going to put our custom characters in, and there's the uh, code we've just typed. So our custom characters are there. Let's go to Notepad. And here is our character set here. See? So we will just copy that. Get back into code and paste it in. Delete the tab there. Okay, and this doesn't need to be a Okay, so here's our characters. I'm sure it probably won't say much if we go into it. Oh, yeah, we can see a few things there. See, and if I, if I type A, B, C, D, E, F, G, see, we've got the shapes there, but obviously we haven't got the colours because that is uh, colour memory. So now what we want to do is we want to actually um, draw our map from the map data. So how are we going to do this? So obviously we know there's a thousand um, characters on a screen, 40 by 25. So let's here, draw the map. And what we will do is we'll paste our 
Oh, we've got something missing there. I think there must be FF there. What's it doing? Oh, I'm hitting the control key because I'm an idiot. FF, right. That's our last thing there. So, under here, we will put, uh, let's put the map. Okay. So, all our map data, which is in here, is here. There's our map data. We'll select all of that, copy it, and then we'll paste it into here. Uh, this is all our characters character set, set uh, characters on the screen. This is what we want into screen memory. So all we need to do now is put this into screen memory. See, there'll only be um, between zero and eighteen in decimal here, which is one, one one, one probably eleven or twelve hexadecimal. Okay, so what we'd like to do now is actually um, put all that or poke it, as it's called in basic into screen memory so a quick way i do it it's not the most code efficient way but it's easy okay so i'll load the x register with zero okay and we'll create a loop here screen loop okay so we'll load in from the map for my X. So we're loading load in the character, the first character, because X will be naught to start with, and it goes through the loop. Store it in screen mem comma X. Okay, we've gone through the, a lot of this in earlier videos, how, how this works. So please check out uh, the earlier videos to see about, you know, putting data into the screen memory. So what we want to do is we just want to repeat that. Okay, uh, we want to do five lots of 200. So I'm just going to copy, copy these two here, these lines. Okay, simply here, just do plus 200. Oh my word. That's 200. Plus 400. Plus 400. Plus 600. Plus 600. Plus 800. Plus 800. Simple as that. Okay, so. That's, that's how it will do. We're going to do five lots of 200. So obviously we want this to loop um, 200 times. So what we do after we've done that, we increase X by one. Compare it with 200. Because if it's 200, it's over because it's 0 to 199, as you well know. Compare 200. Branch, if it isn't 200, back to screen loop. And that is it. That is how we will get that map onto the screen. So let's have a look. Oh, there we have it. Okay, so we can see our shapes. Um, the colours aren't right though, are they? Because we uh, we haven't set them in colour memory. But the important thing is, um, yeah, we have all our shapes here. And they're in the right places. Okay, it's just the colours are off. So let's have a look at using that um, attributes table. Okay, here we have our character uh, attribute data here. So we're going to copy that. There's 18 of them. And we'll paste it at the end. Just put a label there, car, and crib, data. Oop. 
do it too many times. Right. Okay. So the way it works, obviously, what we want to do is when we go through these one by one in blocks of 200, that tells us what character number it is, which is naught. So we want it to look up naught in here. So naught is the first one. And we want it to poke the lower nibble into the color ram. Okay, uh, the high nibble is to do with um, materials, but look, that's all naught anyway. So we just poke the entire lot in there, it makes no difference. So that's D is the color for character naught, A is the color for character one, and character two and character three, then back to D, and then nine. See, so what we want to do for each one of these, we want to look it, look it up in the table and then poke that into the relevant space in color ram. So let's just scroll up here and I'll show you a trick I'm going to use to do this. So this is our, this is, let's do the first 200 here, okay? So we load an accumulator into there and that will have the character number 0, 1, well, 0 to 17. And then it stores it in the screen, man. So using that character number, we want to use that as an index to look up in the table. So if it's character zero, we want the index to be zero. Character one, we want the index to be one. That's the offset from the start of the list. And we have, I've got our X register is in use in this loop. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is use the Y register. So we want Y to be whatever the value is of the character number, which it loads from the map. So a simple process for that is to transfer the accumulator to the Y register. I mean, it copies it, it doesn't transfer, it copies it to the Y register. Then we will load the accumulator from character attribute data table with the address of the start of the table and we offset it by Y. Okay. So character zero, it will be the first first byte in that table. Character one will be the second byte, and that's uh, that's uh, created by Y, which is um, copied from the uh, character number in the accumulator. Then we want to store that in to color memory. Oh, I'm trying to remember the uh, uh, the. Um, Variable and I only use that, two seconds. Yeah, it's color mem, comma x, I believe. So that's, so we now, instead of um, two commands for each block of 200, we've got, uh, we've got five commands. So what we want to do is we want to copy this. Okay. Paste that there. And the only thing we're going to add the 200 to is where it stores it because it's looking at on the table so yeah, that's the same here we will do it for 400 we we'll paste it here and do it plus 600 and then lastly here plus 800 Think. Oh, unknown column. Uh, yes, because as one of the ones I defined, so I spelt it the uh, British way. Let's just paste that. Some of them I've copied from other sources and they've been the American spelling. Right. There we go. So let's run this. And boom! All our colours are in the right place. And that delightfully brings us to the end of the video. So let's have a quick recap what we've learned here. Um, we've learned how to um, design a map in uh, CarPad, which is a lot easier than designing it by hand, like the, uh, or using some Commodore 64 software on the 64 to do it, like the developers had to back in the 80s. Uh, so we've used we've used a modern tool to design this our custom characters 
and our map itself. We've exported it into a file. We've then taken what we need out of that exported file and put it into our own program, which sets multicolor mode, sets up the colors. It then sets up the custom characters into the um, into the Vic chip memory. Then it will um, copy the map into screen memory, as we can see there. And then it will copy all the correct colors into color memory. And what we get here is exactly what we designed here. Albeit the colors are slightly different tones, but that's, uh, yes, that's just the way the 64 is. So that brings this video to a close. I hope you all learned something decent from this one. And um, I look forward to seeing you for the next video. And we will probably look at doing, say, a longer map that we can scroll across um, and probably be a very simple scrolling utility I'll use um, and put in for now, but then we can look at enhancing it later um, on future videos. So I imagine that will be the next video. But until then, bye.